So in today's class, we will discuss about uh, blast furnace productivity. So the performance of uh, any blast furnace can be represented in the form of uh, productivity indices. So there are uh, various uh, methods by which we can represent the blast furnace uh, productivity. So one such uh, productivity index is uh, by considering the ton, uh, ton of hot metal which is produced per meter cube per day. Ton of hot metal produced per meter cube per day can be represented as a productivity of the blast furnace. And another method uh, by which we can we can represent the productivity is it is a ton of uh, hot metal produced per unit hearth area per day. So this is another uh, popular uh, method uh, by which we can represent the productivity of the blast furnace. Apart from uh, these two, there are uh, uh, another two indices are there which are not much frequently used, but uh, uh, they are in existence. One such is the volume utilization coefficient. So based upon the volume utilization coefficient, we can represent the blast furnace productivity. So volume utilization coefficient is nothing but useful volume of the blast furnace required to produce one ton of hot metal per day. So that is uh, considered as a volume utilization coefficient. And another one is the coke consumption rate. So that is the amount of coke which is consumed per unit volume of the blast furnace per day. That also you can consider as a productivity indices. So you can uh, see all these four productivity indices uh, uh, in this four uh, pictorial form. So if you see the concept of productivity, what does mean by productivity is nothing but it is uh, uh, in a nutshell, if you see it is nothing but the ton of hot metal which is produced per day. There is nothing but the productivity of any blast furnace. So how, at the end of the day, how much amount of tons of hot metal it is producing? So it is basically represented by the productivity is basically represented by the ratio of coke throughput to that of the coke rate. Q is nothing but coke throughput. That is the amount of coke which is burned per day to that of A is nothing but the coke rate. That is the amount of coke which is consumed to produce uh, one ton of uh, hot milk. And uh, if you just consider their uh, units, the value of uh, coke is represented in terms of kg per day, and uh, the units of uh, coke rate is represented in, term, in, in terms of kg per ton of hot metal. So if uh, kg, kg gets cancelled, then you can represent uh, this productivity in terms of uh, uh, ton, ton of hot metal per day. So according to this, we can represent the productivity as P is equal to 2 by K. So from this uh, uh, expression, we can uh, understand that the productivity of any blast furnace can be increased either by increasing the coke throughput or by decreasing the coke rate. So, increasing the coke to put means burning more coke per unit time. If you burn more coke per unit time, you can produce a more hot metal per unit time. 
that will certainly uh, improve the productivity of the blast furnace. Provided uh, we should also uh, provide a sufficient uh, favorable conditions to run the blast furnace in a smooth way uh, by considering the appropriate uh, um, high quality raw material. So there, there are various parameters which affects the uh, blast furnace uh, productivity, uh, especially the cook throughput as well as the cook rate. So if you see those uh, parameters, the cook rate, uh, that is the value of K, that can be decreased by reducing the thermal load of the furnace. Thermal load means that is the amount of heat generation per ton of hot metal which is produced. So you can see here, uh, the, if you want to increase uh, productivity, then uh, the cook rate should be decreased. The cook rate uh, can be decreased uh, by uh, decreasing the, uh, the thermal load and uh, by increasing the uh, indirect reductions and also the fuel injections. So coke rate can also be reduced by uh, promoting uh, the indirect uh, reduction. The more the indirect reductions which takes place inside the blast furnace, then that is that that means the more amount of uh, CO is getting consumed, uh, so that uh, uh, the off gas will have a uh, uh, maximum amount of uh, CO two rather than CO and uh, certainly coke rate will be reduced. And uh, for this to happen again, uh, whatever the uh, blast furnace irregularities which we discussed previously, uh, such kind of irregularities should not uh, encounter uh, inside the blast furnace. And for that, uh, uh, we should uh, use high quality raw material uh, and also uh, the distribution of the raw material inside the blast furnace is also very, very important. And uh, fuel injections uh, also, mm -hmm. also fuel injections through the tears all, also can supplement the function of uh, coke, like heat generations and uh, production of reducing gases, and consequently uh, it will reduce the coke rate. <clears throat> you can use some alternative fuels and all so that uh, you can reduce the coke rate. And uh, again, um, the thermal load of the blast furnace can be reduced by increasing the blast temperature by using uh, beneficiation methods and also adding reflux the raw material into the blast furnace. So the burden preparation uh, uh, plays a great role to reduce the coke rate uh, by reducing the thermal load of the blast furnace and uh, promoting in that reductions. So burden preparation basically involves uh, beneficiation, refluxing, and uh, agglomeration. giving proper uh, size and shape and uh, proper uh, mechanical properties to the uh, prepared button. So the, whenever you uh, subject these raw materials for proper beneficiation process, because the raw materials is consisting of a certain amount of GAN content which is associated with it. If you do proper beneficiation, then we can segregate this GAN content and the presence of high amount of can content uh, raw material will demand high amount of uh, heat because uh, these can content basically consist of uh, refractory oxides. So that will demand to, to, to soften and melt these can content. Uh, it demands a uh, high amount of heat. Uh, demanding any quantity of uh, heat uh, certainly show a great impact on the co consumption rate. So, uh, beneficiation allows to decrease this uh, GAN constraint present inside the button and also 
removing the gang content means uh, uh, certainly the volume of the slack which is generating inside the platform is also to certain extent we can reduce it and uh, the amount of uh, sensible and latent heat associated with it that can be reduced the thermal load of the platform is. You also using the refluxed raw material. Uh, also avoids the uh, utilization of uh, fluxes inside the blast furnace. <clears throat> when used, especially the iron bearing material, when use uh, um, self flux or super flux uh, sinters, certainly the amount of uh, line consumptions will be reduced. And uh, uh, we all know very well that any. Um, amount of uh, lime uh, which is uh, dissociated inside the blast furnace in the form of a CACO3, CA1, CO, CA, CA1, CO is an uh, endothermic uh, reaction which demands uh, heat. And if you can use uh, uh, superflux sinters, certainly uh, these kind of endothermic reactions will not occur inside the blast furnace. And certainly that will uh, uh, show a great uh, impact on uh, um, thermal loads that will reduce the thermal loads in the blast furnace uh, and in turn will reduce the uh, rate consumptions. Uh, apart from this, uh, the thermal load of the blast furnace uh, may also be reduced by using a, a preheating blast. So we basically uh, inject uh, a preheated blast through the two years, uh, which is having a temperature of around 1000 to 1100 degrees centigrade. So that uh, this preheated blast will bring brings in a lot of uh, sensible heat uh, that supplements the heat generation in the furnace, and carbon burning, and that will help in uh, reducing the coke rate. Similarly, uh, the, as it is mentioned, that uh, the indirect uh, reduction, <clears throat> indirect reduction can also improve uh, CO utilization and consequently reduce the coke rate. And we all know very well that uh, minimum, uh, if you minimum, uh, forty six percent of the reduction, whatever it is happening, that should be in the indirect form inside the blast furnace. run the blast furnace in a very efficient manner. <clears throat> For this to happen, uh, we should maintain a good bed permeability inside the blast furnace. To maintain good permeability, then uh, the burden, uh, whatever, uh, whatever we are, uh, the raw metal, whatever we are charging inside the blast furnace, the form of burden, that should have a very good uh, uh, mechanical properties and uh, that should generate a very uh, less amount of fines uh, during its uh, uh, traveling inside the blast furnace and um, ultimately the generation of fines should be uh, very very less because of uh, impact or abrasion occurred uh, by the encounter by the raw metal in the blast furnace. <clears throat> So utilization of uh, stronger agglomerated burden like uh, sinterpent pellets really helps in attaining uh, high bed probability inside the blast furnace. And uh, not only uh, the mechanical properties, but also the size and shape and its distribution of this burden inside the blast furnace will also ensure uh, maximum uh, bed probability inside the blast furnace. <coughs> And uh, utilization of uh, this uh, pre-fluxed uh, raw material, uh, it also changes the chemistry of the burden, um, their uh, morphology from glassy structure to uh, porous and strong crystalline calcium ferrite based uh, um, structure will be formed. And certainly that increases the uh, reducibility of the raw material, uh, promoting a, 
good good amount of introduction reactions to take place inside the blast furnace. This is all we discussed under center metrology paper making process already. And uh, utilization of some of the auxiliary fuels. Apart from coke, they're also using some auxiliary fuels like the injection of uh, hydrogen through the tears. Can also promote in that reduction reactions. As we all know very well, that uh, hydrogen is much, much uh, better reducing uh, agent than uh, carbon monoxide, both thermodynamically as well as kinetically. And uh, the reducibility of these works can be increased by around four to five times uh, if you use hydrogen as a reducing agent compared to that of carbon monoxide. And uh, this uh, um, Uh, reduction uh, rates of uh, hydrogen uh, is uh, much, much better than carbon monoxide because of uh, smaller size of hydrogen. <clears throat> so we can introduce this uh, hydrogen into the blast furnace uh, uh, appears in, in the form of uh, steam. That will uh, certainly generate uh, um, <clears throat> H2O after the reaction. And uh, oak to put, uh, so that is your Q, Q value. So the oak to put, increasing in oak to put will increase the productivity of the blast furnace. So, <clears throat> coke burning rate can enhance by increasing uh, air blast rate. Um, so, you can see here, it is mentioned that uh, increased uh, coke input can be increased by oxygen input. Uh, oxygen input can be increased by increasing blast volume as well as uh, doing humidification of the blast as well as uh, uh, Oxygen rich uh, um, enrichment of oxygen gas inside the blast furnace, inside the blast furnace or blast. So these are the some of the parameters by which we can increase the oxygen input. And again, uh, increasing the blast volume can be done by increasing the permeability um, as well as uh, uh, entering high top pressure. So coke burning rate can be enhanced by increasing air blast rate by supplying uh, additional oxygen to the tears in terms of uh, oxygen enrichment of air blast or uh, you can do the humidification of air blast. So high blast rates uh, um, can be ensured by a good stock permeability. So if the permeability of the bed is good, then uh, the blast rate also will be improved. And also you should maintain a high top pressure so that uh, it can increase the blast volume. Uh, the permeability of this uh, stock um, that uh, can be improved through proper button preparation and uh, improving the coke strength. Proper burden preparation means, again, uh, burden uh, preparation includes uh, uh, includes uh, your uh, beneficiation of uh, the raw material and uh, the sizing and uh, the agglomeration of the uh, products, agglomeration of the raw materials. So, so these all will uh, come under the burden uh, operation. So these will certainly uh, enhance the permeability uh, of the bed. Uniform uh, size raw material which is target, uh, then certainly the porosity will be uniform. Uh, the voids, voids, whatever is forming between the raw materials will be more. Uh, 
Friday the Paramount will be good, and Paramount is good. Then volume of the blast which is traveling in the counter current process will be good, and interaction between the gas and the solid will be good. In the solid state, the reaction induction reactions can take place effectively inside the blast furnace. Uh, beneficiation also makes uh, iron rich burden with uh, lower slag volume. Certainly, that will narrow down the wet flow, uh, decreasing the pressure drop in the wet zones. Uh, yesterday, also, we have seen uh, when we are discussing about uh, blast furnace irregularities, we have uh, discussed about some of the irregularities like uh, uh, flooding. Um, so, if you doesn't have a proper permeability uh, in the bed, then certainly um, pressure will be increased, and um, that may lead to upliftment of the upliftment of the liquid products inside the blast furnace, uh, which may lead to formation of uh, scabs or and, uh, flooding of these raw flooding of uh, these liquid products which takes place. That will uh, ends up with uh, uh, solid accretions which are formed at the lower part of the blast furnace, especially in the bed zones. So high strength uh, uh, of the burden uh, produces lesser amount of dust. Certainly, if you, if the mechanical properties of these raw materials, whatever we are charging, if it is having good properties, then certainly during its uh, motion inside the blast furnace. Uh, it, uh, it it will undergo abrasion and impact, but uh, even though if it is having good strength, then certainly the generation of mines because of this abrasion impact will be very, very less and uh, because of which uh, the permeability of the bed can be, cannot be hampered. Especially in the uh, dry zone of the uh, blast furnace, that means the um, stock part of the blast furnace. In addition to the uh, improving the quality of the burden, uh, high top pressure. High top pressure. If you are uh, maintaining a high top, uh, nowadays uh, uh, all the blast furnaces are uh, operating with high top pressures. So, which will uh, improve the residence time of the um, burden in the stack part of the blast furnace. Uh, in turn. Which will improve the uh, improve the solid state in solid gas interaction between the uh, between the gas and the reducing gas and the raw material in the stack part of the blast furnace, so that uh, maximum amount of CV utilization may take place in the, uh, in, the, in the stack part. The solid state reduction reactions can take place effectively, and uh, through which uh, um, the coke rate uh, will be. It will be minimized. Also, this uh, entering high top pressures uh, will reduce the pressure drop inside the blast furnace under high blast rates. This way, we can improve the output of the blast furnace. So these are the uh, some of the parameters we need to take into the consideration to improve the coke throughput as well as uh, uh, to reduce the your coke rate inside the blast furnace, which in turn will improve the productivity of the blast furnace. With so this, uh, uh, we have come to a conclusion. Of blast uh, furnace uh, products and utilization and blast uh, furnace uh, irregularities and its productivity. In the next module, we will discuss about uh, alternative routes of iron.